What's up guys, welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 23, and as you might have guessed, it's a really fun episode. I play the Bellagio 510 game, and I get into some really big hands with Danielle Anderson, or perhaps better known as D-Moon Girl. I interview her, and we talk about the hands together, so she gives her perspective. I wasn't actually planning on filming the session, so I ended up recreating the hands using Share My Pair. I'll have a link in the description box below. It's a, it's a cool app where you input the data from the hands yourself and then it replays it back for you. And then you can share it with your friends. You can post it on Facebook or any other websites. And uh, it just stores it for you too so you can analyze it on your own later. Um, my buddy Kevin Colenzo makes an appearance in this, <laughs> in this video. You won't see his face, but you will see his finger quite a bit when I'm talking to Danielle. Um, also, the World Series is going on, so uh, I've been really busy with cash games and tournaments, but I have a ton of content, so I plan on getting it out as quickly as I can. Also, uh, I'm going to give a vloggers game update at the end, but for now, let's go ahead and get into the episode. In the first big hand of the session, I have pocket queens under the gun plus one. The player under the gun limps in, I raise to 40, a pro in the cutoff calls, and the button, who I believe is a rec player, three bets to 140. I hadn't seen the button three bet at all up until this point, but I had seen him call a lot pre-flop. He seemed to play pretty straightforward, so I imagine he's at the top of his range. I didn't want to four bet and have to call off with queens, so I just called the extra 100, as did the cutoff. We go three ways to the flop and it comes queen jack five with two diamonds. We've got the best possible hand in a three bet pot. The situation is quite good for us. I check, hoping the button is gonna have a hand like aces, kings, or jacks and will bet. Unfortunately, the cutoff and the button ended up checking back. The turn is the deuce of diamonds and we no longer have the nuts. The good news is that the button checks back the flop, so it's extremely unlikely that he has a flush at this point if he 3 bet for value pre-flop, the only combinations of hands that now have a flush are ace-king of diamonds or perhaps ace-jack of diamonds, and there's almost no chance he'd have checked back combo draws that strong. If he 3 bet as a bluff with two diamonds in his hand, he probably would have bet the flop too, so I don't have to worry about him having me beat here too often. I don't want to risk the hand getting checked through again, so this time I bet 250. The cutoff calls, and I'm a little concerned. He could definitely have a flush, and just be flatting to let the button come along and keep me in the hand in case I don't have a hand strong enough to call a raise, but perhaps he gets more value from me on the river. The cutoff can also have a hand like a set, ace-queen, ace-jack, or he could be on a flush draw. The button folds, so I go heads up to the river with the cutoff. The river is the eight of spades. It's a good card if I was ahead on the turn. Some people might bet here, but I check because I have almost all the queens, so his range is mainly going to consist of flushes, sets, one pair hands, and missed flushes. If he has a flush or a set, he'll be betting for value. In those instances, I'll call losing to his flushes, but I'll be beating his sets. If he has a one pair hand like ace jack or king jack, he probably wouldn't be able to make a call if I bet anyway and I'd expect him to check back here, but we don't lose much value from checking. Now, if he has a missed draw, checking gives him the opportunity to make a bluff attempt, and we gain a lot of value with this action since he wouldn't be able to call a bet from us. My opponent bets 520. I make the call. He turns over 10 nine of hearts, giving him the straight on the river. I was definitely surprised to see this hand. I didn't expect him to call with an open-ended straight draw given there are three diamonds already on the board. So he could have been dead or just drawing to six outs with the three better still behind him. It ended up working out though. Now we're going to get into the section of the episode where I go over some key hands I played with one of the all-time winningest female online poker players, Danielle Anderson. It's a little tough to hear, so be sure to turn the volume all the way up. All right, so just finished the session, was in for 2300. Uh, played some interesting hands with Danielle. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, talk about those real quick. So first hand we played, you just got over to our table, the main game. Yep. 
And uh, you opened to 30 from like under the gun plus one or something? Uh, I don't remember position, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it's early position. Yeah. I just I just called on the button with Ace Jack offsuit. Uh, so we went heads up to the flop. Flop was King 10, 6, rainbow. Yep. You bet 50. Yep. I believe I bet 50 into what, 80? Yeah, I had King 10. Oh, so, shit, really? Yeah, was I supposed to wait till the end? Was that supposed <laughs> no, to be No, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, I flopped top two, so I was pretty happy. Yeah. It should also be noted when we go over the analysis of this hand that I had just come from 1020 where I was like set over set. Yeah, and you told me that you were set over set. And I was really irritated. Yeah. And But then the game went terrible, so I came down to 510. So I was a little, uh, a little antsy when I sat. Yeah, so she bet 50. I decided to call in position with uh, an over and a gut shot. And uh, I mean, folding seems fine there, I guess. But, uh, I think calling is fine. Yeah. So, uh, turn is the old Queen of Clubs. Um, she bet 110. I raised to 330 and she called. I actually, I was kind of irritated with myself because when the Queen came out, I think, I mean, I don't know that much about the game. Yeah. A little bit, and I think against a good player, um, that can hit your range yeah. quite well. So I actually think that I prefer check calling there. Yeah. Uh, but whatever the case, because I'm a bozo, I led. Yeah. And you raise small enough to sure. keep me in the pot. And I also thought that you could. You There's could a do club that with too. So there are two clubs out there. Yeah, I thought you could do something like that with like a combo draw. Or you could have yeah. like a, a king jack, or you know. So then the river is a jack of diamonds. Obviously not the card that I was hoping for. But uh, you led River. You bet at 540, I think. Yeah, I think it might have been even like. I uh, know. I think it was definitely. It was definitely 540 actually. 540. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. And I. It, I didn't have that much behind, so I could, at that point it was like, well, my hand just went to shit. But uh, yeah. I can pretty easily from early position represent an ace. And I mean, if you don't have one, you just. And I just shouldn't really have aces that often in that spot, other than maybe ace jack, because like I'm not really gonna turn ace queen into bluff on the turn, you know? Like, I might yeah. have a set of uh, sixes or something, like, yeah. and I might have two pair, but I'm not really gonna have an like, ace-king ever, because I have three bet that free flop. Yeah, and I didn't have... think that you'd flat with, like, ace-ten, and then flatting and raising with ace-ten would make no sense. Right. Um, so, I just felt like, you know, my hand wasn't worth very much as it was, um, and didn't want to check to you and give you an opportunity to bluff at it, so it seemed like an okay spot, but you snap one all in for like 200 more, and I was pretty <laughs> content to uh, give up the hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Second, uh, second big hand we played against each other. Um, under the gun limped in. I raised to 40 with ace king of hearts from under the gun plus one. You were in middle position. You flat with uh, six, seven of clubs. Six, seven of Should clubs. be noted that the under the gun limper was uh, very much the spot at the table. And um, so was the big one too. Or was that? Was it even? was the big one, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, I'm sorry. Wasn't I the under the gun limper there? <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, we were sitting a little bit deeper by that point. I had yeah. chipped up a little bit, um, yeah. so I don't know exactly how deep we were. Right. Big blind calls, limber calls. We go four ways to the flop. Flop comes jack, eight, five. Uh, eight, five of clubs. So <laughs> she flops the old open-ended straight flush draw. I think it was the jack of hearts, so I think I had yeah, backdoor I right. royal flush draw. Okay. So, uh, so I put out a small C, or I, what did I bet? I might have bet 120 into like 180 or something like that. Yeah, I bet 120. Uh, Danielle called, and then the big blind, who was the spot at the table, called as well. The turn was like a two or three. It was like an offsuit. It was, a, it was three, some sort of break. Yeah, was, yeah. Was, yeah. Didn't connect with the board at all. So, um, big blind checked. I was planning on just giving up on it. I checked. Danielle put out a bet of 320. 320. Yeah, so big blind folded. Obviously, uh, I don't really have a very good hand. I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> I feel like I have. It. So, I mean, I think that you can have actually, a lot of draws. I'm, I'm actually really curious about your thought process. I mean, I think that you can have a lot of draws. I knew that you were stuck from 1020. I mean, you, you uh, lost that pot against me earlier. I thought that you might be bluffing there with like, I thought you might have floated with like a gutter or something like that, or like yeah. a flush draw. Uh -huh. And uh, so I was like, all right, well, I'll call one time. Um, I with feel no like real those are all like river. potentially like semi-valid points, but I also think that you're just like 
what card doesn't put you in kind of like a tough spot? Because no, I'm even, in a tough spot. Like you hit an ace, no. like you hit a king, even like I could very much have like ice jack. I, I thought you might just check back a river, and then if you yeah. bet, I'd probably just fold. Uh -huh. um, actually, if everything breaks, I think I might I might fold there for the side. I think I kind of. I think too. that I definitely though you could just be drawing stone dead because like yeah. especially with the spot in, like I'm not. There's not a lot of hands that when you see bet that I'm going to be like raising because like why I want to keep. Yeah. I want to keep the spot in. So like if yeah. I pop a set, if I pop two pair, if I pop like like. I mean, there's there's so many things that can have there where you're just like. Yeah, yeah, it's not know. good. It's yeah. bad. Don't don't do that. Don't fucking flat. Uh, <laughs> in general, I just feel like I feel like just in general, like a lot of I've seen yeah. a lot of people who are watching your vlog or whatever are like people who are kind of beginning. And I think in general, like you see people make these plays, or whatever. And they're these like super advanced, you know, yeah. thought process, and that's all good and fun. But in general, just like don't put yourself in a super shitty spot against a player who's competent. Right. You know what I mean? And I, I kind out of, of thought of she position. was after me a little bit, and like I knew, like she just you just bluffed. Well, you turned your king ten into a bluff. Yeah. I didn't know you had all that hand. I just thought you yeah. turned in like something, just a like random, six just eight random hearts random or something. Just random punting off, yeah, which yeah. are kind of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, she's like clearly going after me a little bit. That was like in my mind, you know, what's going on. So I was like, all right, well, I'll flat here just because I don't want to get pushed around, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm gonna look like such a goddamn hero when she checks back in my <laughs> ace ice cubes. <laughs> yeah. So the river's the old ace of clubs. So flush gets there. I don't really beat anything other than like miss straight draws, which I think you could have there like sometimes. Yeah. Um, but you bet. So I check. You bet five twenty, I think. Yeah, I bet pretty small because my thought process yeah. was that like. I didn't think you had clubs. It's way easier right. for me to have clubs. I also thought I thought that the ace would be like a scare card for you right. because I had put you on like potentially having queens you know something like, something like a that. jack or queens or kings or whatever, and you're not going to want to just like pay off my ace jack whatever. Right. So um, I put it about that I thought was likely to get called. Yeah. Um, in my thought, I, I stopped for a second. And I was like, oh man, this is not a yeah. fun spot for me to be in because yeah. you got so small. It just seemed like you were going for value. Yeah. But at the same time, I just. Couldn't find a fold, so uh, made the call, turned over Ace King, and it was no good. <laughs> womp, womp, womp. <laughs> so she got me. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we're tied though. We're like we're one, one, yeah, one, one. Yeah, we're tied. But we both we... got the hashtag King that one time. So yeah, that's... so that's, that's really all that matters here. That's actually the that important thing. That is all that thing. matters. <laughs> a short time after misplaying that hand against Danielle, I pick up three deuce of diamonds in the big blind while Danielle straddles on my left. It folds to the small blind, who is certainly the weakest player at the table. He raises to 50. Given how short he is and how weak my hand is, as a default play, it's certainly much better to fold in this situation. He really is the only weak player at the table though, so I wanted to get involved in a hand against him. I call and Danielle calls as well. We go three ways to the flop and it's five three deuce with two hearts. We flop bottom two pair and the small blind bets 100 in the dark. We're in a dream situation. I raise to 300. Danielle folds and the small blind calls. The turn comes, it's the jack of hearts. The flush gets there and pocket jacks now has me beat. But the player checks, he only has 450 more and the pot is 750, so there's no way I'm gonna do anything other than shove. I put it all in, he folds and I take it down. Next I pick up pocket fives in middle position. I open to 40, Danielle calls and the big blind calls as well. He's the spot that I played the last hand with, but he's now in the nine seat. The flop comes king seven five rainbow. I flop bottom sets. The big blind checks. I check because Danielle is behind me and she's been aggressive kind of the whole night. Betting here is just as good or perhaps better because we don't want it to check through and we can get some calls by hands containing a king or seven, maybe pocket eights, nines and tens, and some straight draws too. Danielle does check back, and the turn is another seven, so I fill up. The big blind checks, I bet 60. Danielle folds, and the big blind raises to 160. I couldn't really be happier with this situation. He only has 700 left. I put him on a seven, and I didn't think he'd be able to fold trips, so I jammed even though it's a huge re-raise. He makes the call. The river is a deuce of clubs. He turns over eight, seven hearts, and I win a big one. Now I have king, queen, and diamonds in middle position. I raise to 30, the player on my left calls, and the big blind calls too. The flop comes queen, three, deuce, the big blind checks. I bet 40 for value, and I'm trying to get called by worse queens, pocket pairs like tens down to fours. Some straight draws may be able to call also. The 
Player on my left folds while the big blind thinks for a long time and calls. I didn't get the feeling he was very strong at all. The turn is the nine of diamonds. I've got a flush draw now to go along with my top pair. The big blind checks, I could certainly bet, but I went ahead and checked back because I'm fine with only getting two suites of value with one pair, and the big blind might turn his hand into a bluff on the river or call a river bet light since he might not expect me to check back a hand so strong on the turn. The river is the four. The big blind bets 120 into 175. I'm never gonna fold after checking the turn. I call immediately and the big blind throws his hand into the muck without showing. So it looks like I might've gotten maximum value with the line that I took. In the last hand, I pick up ace king of spades under the gun and open to 30. The player in middle position calls and the big blind calls too. Both are rec players, so I'm in a pretty good spot here. The flop comes 9-7 deuce, the big blind checks, I check, and the last player to act checks back. The turn is another seven, the big blind checks, I think there's a good chance I might actually be ahead, so I throw out a small bet of 30. The player behind me looks like he wants to fold initially, but then he raises to 95. The big blind folds, my read was that my opponent was weak, and I guess I still hadn't learned my lesson from calling the turn with ace-king high against Danielle. I call thinking that the only hand my opponent's repping that has me beat is one containing a seven. Given the fact that he looked like he wanted to fold and that it's not very probable he has a seven, I make the call. The river is another deuce. It's a good card because it makes it less likely my opponent flopped the set and the flush draw also missed. I check, my opponent checks back, I turn over ace high, and it's good. I take down one last hand before cashing out for over 3100. I was in for 2300 after losing with pocket queens in the beginning, so I ended up winning a little over 800 on the session. That's it for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section. I've been really busy playing uh, cash games and some tournaments at the World Series. I've got a lot of really cool footage from, I've got a lot of really cool live action footage actually from the tables. So I'll definitely be making more traditional type vlogs where I show the, the live action. Uh, but it's easy for me to make these videos using share my pair. So if you like this, let me know because I can pump out some of these videos in addition to the more traditional style videos that I've been doing in the past. I'll put a link in the description box to share my pair so uh, you can use it with your friends. And I wanna give a big thanks to Danielle Anderson for uh, talking with me about the hands that we played. She's awesome and super good at poker, so thanks a lot. I also wanna thank Bart Hansen for spending like two and a half hours with me, teaching me how to use ScreenFlow, which, um, I used to video the screen, which allowed me to make this video. Without him, it probably wouldn't have been possible. So check out his training sites. It's crushedlivepoker.com. It's an awesome site. I use it a lot myself, actually. And uh, I wanna give a thanks to um, Kevin's Finger for making a cameo appearance. It was really all over this vlog. So that was, that was really nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and last thing is, I said I was gonna give a vloggers game update. The trooper said that he wasn't invited to the vloggers game. I don't know if there was some kind of mix up. I saw the text that Poker Kraut sent him, inviting him, and then the trooper said, hmm, sounds interesting, I'll have to think about it. There wasn't really a follow up after that, I don't think, so um, I don't know, perhaps we needed to reach out a little bit more. At the end of episode number 17, I did mention that it'd be great to have him in the game and that he needed a little bit more persuasion. So I encourage viewers to go on his channel and make some comments and um, try to convince him to play with us. If he does still wanna play, we can easily make it work. Uh, we can do some kind of rotation or uh, I can sit out. I, I think one or two of the other guys might not be able to make it anyway, so we can certainly have room for him. And um, I think it'd be a lot of fun. I think he adds a lot to the game. So that's it. Hope you guys are all doing well. Uh, good luck at the tables during the World Series, and I'll see you next time. I want the pretty filter on. All right, so... Uh... <laughs>
You got that on record. <laughs> oh, I just want everybody to know I've been playing for like 16 hours, so. <laughs> what a grinder.